Hey gang, today we are going to learn the full version of Eleanor Rigby, and I'm going to see if I have enough time. I'm going to, on the same video, teach you the cello part that I wrote for this. Cello part. We had to take, um, we're going to have to move around octaves a little bit to make it uh, fit. Uh, I'm looking forward to having my um, bass dulcimers play this. Um, all right, we're going to just jump right in on this advanced version. You've already worked on the um, prep work that I gave you last week. Okay, so if you understand that, all you need to know is we, I have made a few, we, I always say we, I guess I'm talking about me and Doby Joe, I don't know. I've made a few changes, just a couple of them, regarding the syncopation on this. So a few of the notes that usually occur on the next first beat of the next measure are now on the and of the four of the previous measure. So you might want to watch the music and kind of listen before you attempt to play this and uh, kind of map out where uh, some of those subtle changes were made. All right, fingers crossed. I haven't warmed up on this at all, as usual. Let's see what happens. Um, I've got my metronome set at about 63. And uh, that should be slowly enough to make it work. Okay, and we're gonna, obviously we're gonna have to take this a lot faster. I hear a kitty cat meowing to go outside and he's just gonna have to wait. Here we go. One, two, Three, four.
stretch. One and two, three, four. Okay? Now I made a mistake right when I started this. The timing on the A part, the very first part, I think I missed the syncopated. Well, it's not syncopated. I might have syncopated it instead of not syncopating it. Let's play that A part, the very first two lines. They're all identical. Every A part should be identical here. Okay, here's that A part again, and with the corrected timing. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three. That's the way that first part should sound. Now, you should be able to play this new cello part that I'm about to play for you over the top of what I just played so that you can practice it. Your cello part also has two pages. You're going to have on this cello part, you're going to have uh, some hybrid picking to do. Now, if you finger style this, you won't have to hybrid pick, obviously. If you finger style it, if you look at the third line down, you've got a... You take these two fingers, let's see if I can get that in the camera, and you pinch, pick, pinch, pick. So I'm pinching with my thumb and my middle finger, and I'm picking my middle string with my index finger. Pinch, pick, pinch, pick, pinch, pick, pinch, pick. Okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and flat pick it. Now, the hardest part, I think, about playing the cello part is really honoring your... Um, your syncopation uh, and your timing because there's a lot of waiting around. Before we go to that though, if you're not finger styling, hybrid picking, if I've never covered this with you before, hybrid picking is when you use your pick like you normally would and you use another finger to pinch. So you would be pinching, you'd be picking with these two fingers just like you normally do, that note, and then you use your middle finger or your third finger to pinch. Okay, all right, that's what's called hybrid picking. If you need more of a tutorial on that, let me know. Okay, here we go. Here's the cello part. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three, four. One, two. Syncopated differently than that. One, two, we need to change that. 
four and one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three, four, one, two, three. Last verse. One. Now let's talk about the last last line on page one. I played that the way it should be played, but I need to adjust the tablature. One and two and three and four and. See me, let me double check that. One and two and three and four and. Okay, the last line. If you happen to get a copy of this before I fixed the copies, the five and six belong together as the four and. So that measure would be one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. See what I mean? Okay, doesn't that happen a couple of times? I think it does. I thought it did. Yes, it does. It happens for the first time. If you go down to verse two, the last three lines of page one, the second to the last line is where we first see that one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. So if you've got one of the original copies, please adjust your music. All right. Now let's take a look. I think I've got time. Let's take a look at the chords because someone is going to have to play these chords. Um, the hardest part about this is going to be keeping track of where you are. All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, four.
remember, all of these parts, you have to put a capo on the first fret. I should have reminded you that at the top of this lesson. Hey, practice really hard on this. This is going to sound so cool when we all get together to play it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.